Yes, with the Apollo! I'm so happy to be here. I love Christmas. I love Christmas. I love celebrating Christmas so much more than birthdays. I don't, I don't celebrate my birthday anymore. I'm 42. I can't be bothered with that. I didn't even have a 40th. My mates, they took me to see Guns N' Roses live. Or so they told me anyway. <laughs> I mean, I suppose we could have just gone to one of their houses and put the live album on loud, really, couldn't we? <laughs> Charged me six quid a pint for three hours. <laughs> yeah, not as busy as you thought we would have been in this Guns N' Roses concert, is it, Chris? Not as popular as they once were, it seems. Loads of room. You enjoying yourself? Yeah, no, it's sad, mate. A little bit weird that there's a cat, but never mind. <laughs> oh, mince pies. I love mince pies. I'm a mince pie junkie. I love the cheap ones. I love the expensive ones. I love the big ones. I love the little ones. I love shoving them in my face in one go or just rubbing them straight into my gums. Christmas dinner, oh my days. I love goose fat roast potatoes, because they annoy the vegetarians. <laughs> I don't do peas, peas can piss off. <laughs> I can't keep them on the fork all the way from down here to up here. <laughs> you give me peas on me Christmas dinner, I'll still be there at Easter chasing them around the living room. <laughs> Sprouts. Oh, I like sprouts. My wife, she doesn't like me having sprouts. I'm not allowed sprouts or cocaine. <laughs> she says I'm unbearable on both. <laughs> Here's a problem I have. Here's a problem I bet lots of you have. At home, we love a little bit of the Christmas Michael Bublé album. Oh, it's a belter. In fact, we, we played the Christmas Michael Bublé album so much during December that my phone then thinks I'm the world's biggest Michael Bublé fan and recommends nothing but everything he's ever done for month after month after month. And it takes me the best part of a year to convince it I'm not, by which point we're getting back into Christmas again. I'm just stuck in a never-ending Bublé loop. <laughs> if I'm totally honest with you, though, I think Christmas comes around a little bit too, a little bit too quick, you know? Another Christmas, another load of presents that I've got to sit down on the floor and try and play with with my daughter. <sighs> I'm still working on a jigsaw from last year. <laughs> it's a 48 piece, of, you know. I've, I've done five edges, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a long-term project. <laughs> I do find it difficult sometimes, you know, being a dad in the dark it has its complications. When she was little, like little, little, she loved going to the farm. I hated the farm. <laughs> Do you know what the farm is to me? Just a series of fences over which are different smells of shit. <laughs> she was like, what animal's that one, Daddy? I was like, I have no idea, sweetheart, but it smells worse than the last one. <laughs> Not as bad as the first two. And she turned like four. She loved going down the park and kicking a ball around. I, I couldn't commit myself without destroying people's picnics. <laughs> she was big into hide and seek for a while. <laughs> the problem with that was every game came with a very real possibility that she might die of dehydration. <laughs> while she's waiting for me to find her. I mean, we did play it. We, we live in a two-bedroom flat. We've got this big, vast communal garden out the back. You know, I remember us playing it out there. She was four, playing it outside, just putting a little show on for the neighbors. <laughs> she ran off to hide, because she hadn't yet realized that she didn't actually need to hide. <laughs> she just needed to be quiet, really, didn't she? <laughs> I mean, she could have just stayed there. <laughs> but she ran off to hide. And it wasn't a quiet hide, it was a giggly hide. The game was I had to follow the giggling till I found the giggling behind a tree, and then I had to chase the giggling back to where we started from. And then she'd say, OK, Daddy, your turn to hide now, Daddy. I said, well, I can't, can I, sweetheart? Because I can't see where I'm going to go and hide, because I can't see where to hide, so I can't hide, can I? She said, that's OK, Daddy. I'll show you where to hide. <laughs> you can hide where I hid. 
And she took me hand at the age of four years old and she guided me across this big, vast communal garden over to the tree where she'd been hiding. And just as we were approaching the tree, she brought me straight into this bird table. <laughs> in the ground, came up to about here. I've lived in that flat for 10 years. I've no bloody clue how long that bird table's been there for. It knocked the wind out of me. I took a few steps backwards. Without batting an eyelid, she just took me hand. She placed it around the far side of the tree where she'd been hiding, and she just looked up at me. And she just said, I hid here, Daddy. <sighs> but I didn't walk into that, did I? <laughs> like, that was my fault. Like, she wasn't the one entirely in charge of the safety of both of us at just the age of four. But then she turned five, and all of a sudden it was all about the art, and the drawing, and the colouring in. Daddy, come and draw with me, Daddy. I mean, on a brighter note, it's a lot safer than hide and seek. <laughs> Just constant note, Daddy, come and draw with me, Daddy. I think the bottom line is what she's realised is that my shit makes her shit look better. <laughs> So who's joining the gym in the new year? <laughs> Don't bother, it's a con. <laughs> I'll tell you why it's a con. You should go down the gym. You've got all the good intentions in the world. A new year, a new you. You know, you choose your machine, you know, you can, you can do the running machine if you want to train to do some running. The rowing machine if you want to train to do some rowing. The cross trainer if you want to be a thunderbird. <laughs> bring into your daily routine, you know? Doesn't matter though, you get on your machine, you do 20 minutes, you're knackered after 20 minutes, aren't you? 100 calories though, that's triple figures. That pushes you on for a little bit. 105 calories, 110 calories, the sweat is dripping off you. But you feel fantastic, you think, this is worth the gym subscription alone, this single machine, triple figures. And then you go on and you realize it's not even half a Mars bar. <laughs> that you ate a Mars bar on the way to the gym <laughs> just to give you the energy to do the thing that it's taking you to lose half the thing you've had to eat to do it. You've gained half a Mars bar. All I was doing was gaining half Mars bars for 60 quid a month gym subscription. Plus the cost of Mars bars. I learned pretty early on though that the running machine wasn't for me. You know, just personally speaking, speaking from a personal perspective. I, I had no visual point of reference as to where about on the running machine I was. And unless I was running at precisely the right speed, I would just boom, fly off the back. <laughs> and then I'd pack it from a car window. Two thousand and twenty is the future, almost. I mean, nearly. I think two thousand and twenty-one. That's official future. That's proper future. Two thousand and twenty-one. That's when they said we'd have all them self-driving cars out on the road. Oh, I can't wait for my self-driving car. <laughs> I can't. I want one of them Google cars. I bet you they're amazing. I bet you it doesn't matter where you tell it you want to go. It just wants to take you to see sexy girls in your local area. <laughs> The only problem is, though, the other major revolution that's happening at this very moment in the automobile industry. All the cars are also becoming electric, aren't they? And the one thing that electric cars don't do, that normal cars do do, is make a bloody noise. <laughs> so chances are I'll be run over before I get myself driving car. <laughs> Even worse, run over by my own self-driving car. It's going to be a disastrous first day of ownership, isn't it? It's a problem. It's going to be carnage out there. There was a thing in the news, you might have flicked past it, a little story about Jaguar. It said, Jaguar, they spent four years researching this problem, four years researching a fake noise to put on their electric cars so you can hear them coming. Four years, they settled on this futuristic sound that they created, this kind of Four years they worked on that, four, four years. 
The story then said that they have subsequently had to remove the sounds from their cars because what they found is out in the real world when people are hearing them coming, everyone was looking up in the air. <laughs> four years, four years of research and people's first reaction was bloody aliens. <laughs> Run for the hills. Why can't you just make it sound like a car? <laughs> Stop trying to be clever, make it sound like a car. Do you know what it is? It's a speaker under the bonnet that plays a sound that everyone outside the car can hear. Just make it sound like a car. If you can't manage that, just make it go vroom. <laughs> just make it go vroom. I'm a car. I'm a car. Do not look up, I am a car. Bigger the vehicle, deeper the voice. I'm a boss. <laughs> I'm a boss. I'm a truck. <laughs> I'm a truck. I'm a garbage truck and I love to eat garbage. It's a speaker. If they wanted to sing a song, put an MP3 on it, man, do what he wants. I'm a garbage truck and normally the collection's on a Tuesday. <laughs> but it's a bank holiday. I'm a garbage <laughs> truck. Merry Christmas! Bring on the mince pie!